Welcome back to the City Current Show. I'm your host, Jeremy Park. We're always honored to bring you inspiring stories of individuals and organizations making a difference, empowering the good. And we love talking about varsity spirit and the work they're doing around cheerleading and so much more globally. We're honored to be joined by Bill Seeley. He's the president of Varsity Spirit Corporation. Bill, how are you doing, buddy? Man, I'm great, Jeremy. Good to see you, brother. Hey, you are doing so much. We have some exciting news to share, including not only new office space, but uh, some updates from the IOC. So we'll talk all about that in just a second. But for starters, give us some background. When you talk about varsity, give us a little bit of the lay of the land, some context around all you do. So uh, varsity spirit, we're everything school spirit. So uh, think about uh, cheerleading, dance, band, everything that kind of makes up the ancillary activities around the actual game. Um, uh, we, we got into the band space, uh, I think you and I spoke uh, a few years ago in 2019, uh, which kind of rounds out it's like the third leg of, of the school spirit stool. So uh, we sell uniforms, cheerleading uniforms, dance uniforms, band uniforms, uh, and then we provide events, training and education, summer camps, um, media uh, that surround each of those different verticals and then bringing those together, we've created some new events that, that kind of recreate the situation that they participate in at school down at our national championships called Game Day Live to really try to help drive uh, engagement inside the schools. So when you talk about your world, it's year round, it's media, it's dance, cheerleading, band, all these things coming together, uniforms like you're talking about. When you look at how far the evolution of the sport, talk about that because it's come a long way thanks to your efforts. It has, uh, Jeremy. The, you know, I think really, if you look at where cheerleading and dance began inside schools, uh, traditionally, it was uh, around the leadership aspects, um, entertainment and, and leadership at games. We really infused uh, more of the athleticism, showmanship uh, in that keeping those core elements, but then highlighting those with more athleticism uh, and then putting that on television to give it a, a, a you know, global view um, and let allow people to see it and get engaged. That drove more engagement. And now all of those activities are being participated in outside of the school in clubs where all they do is the competitive and the athletic element. And it's really treated more like a sport outside of the schools. Um, we also helped develop stunt, which is a, a title nine sport. Now the fastest growing female sport in the country uh, derived from cheerleading. We look to do the same thing uh, on the dance side. Um, so those are some of the things we've done, how it's evolved over the years. And I, I you know, think we've, uh, talked a little bit before the show about uh, getting the recognition from the International Olympic Committee, uh, the, ne the international governing body that we launched uh, about 15 years ago just got recognition. The fastest recognition uh, by the International Olympic Committee in the history of the modern game. So we're really proud of uh, helping uh, support that effort. Absolutely. And I think that also goes to show, though, all the momentum that you've built up through those years has led to this, which then obviously you get that sort of level of attention. It's like, oh, this needs to happen. So then you get that recognition, but that doesn't happen unless all those other things go into creating this level of momentum. Give us an idea when you talk about numbers, the numbers of youth, the numbers of viewers, what are some of the stats that put a smile on your face? Sure. Well, you know, we're Disney's largest uh customer. We bring more people down to uh, Walt Disney World than any other company in the world. So we'll bring a quarter of a million people down to uh, Walt Disney World this year in terms of partic participation inside cheerleading. Uh, it's north of about 1.5 million. Band is uh, significantly larger than that, north of two and a half uh, million participating in band. And then in, in dance, uh, it's a little bit smaller inside the schools, but if you count uh, studios and those kinds of things, it, it's even bigger than that. It's about four and a half million. So large number of participation. And then you have the spectators and the, and the concentric rings that go out uh, beyond the participation numbers. Like any and every sport you've had to navigate through the pandemic, talk about that navigation and where we are in this moment now. Yes, it turns out that pandemics are not good for live events. <laughs> they, cause, they cause problems with live event businesses. 
So two thirds of our business is around live event services. So uh, it was, uh, I, I can laugh at it now because we're through it, but it was brutal at the time. Um, you know, everything shut down in 2020. I remember the day literally uh, President Trump got on and said, you know, we're getting ready to close down uh, the country for the worldwide pandemic. We literally just landed our team and, and teams down at Disney were already, you know, descending upon Orlando to go compete at a national championship. Um, so I grabbed our executive team. We flew down to Orlando, got in around 12.30 a.m., uh, drove to the uh, hotel lobby. I get the uh, event leadership group together, and we kind of um, created the protocols to not only execute that event safely, but get everyone home safely uh, as well. And we used those protocols. That was really the first set of protocols that we, we had in place for events where we did people in, in groups um, and we had the, the distance, we had sanitation stations around. Uh, we really developed a large piece of how we handled our live events uh, at that event. Now we were tired as all get out when the, when the event was over, but executed it well, the team responded well. And that's uh, really what we had to do the entire time. When two thirds of your revenue comes from uh, live events, you get really creative, really fast, and you come up with innovative ways to make sure you're serving the customers. You know, and the other thing, Jeremy, that, that we noticed early on, we knew that, you know, things were challenging. Nobody knew what was going on. The one thing we did know is that young people were going to be hurting because they weren't around their peers. They weren't around. And so one of the things we wanted to ensure is we wanted to make sure as we were getting back, we were getting back as quickly and as safely as we possibly could so that we could make sure that we're bringing those young people together, giving them something positive and hopeful to look forward to where they could plug in, get connected with their peers and get a taste of normalcy. So at the event, uh, you know, in late 2020, when we started bringing things back um, and then 2021, I can't tell you the kids, the faces uh, that, that were, you know, the smiles on their faces and, and the parents uh, were just so complimentary uh, and thanking us. Thank you so much for fighting through this. Thank you for providing these events for our kids. They need this. Uh, it really was. It was great to see, great to see the staff and our, and our executive team really just fight through and, and really stay on mission of elevating the student experience all the way throughout it. So having that mission kind of as our North Star through this really dark storm, I think really enabled us to execute in a way that uh, I just uh, I couldn't be more proud. Yeah, and I think for the youth, for the students, you know, this is their world. And like you said, the, it's their support network, their friends, their future, their scholarships. Like it, it's everything. It's, it's their outlet to express themselves and self-confidence, all of these things. So, so important when you look at just what that means to them individually and obviously together as groups and as teams. Carry that forward into safety has always been the, the main priority with you all. When you talk about the camps and the competitions and everything. What are some of the things that you've learned through this process of COVID and the pandemic that you've applied now in terms of safety protocols and things? So in other words, what are some of the, the, the good things that you've been able to say, okay, let's take this and actually implement this now moving forward for safety? Yeah, so yeah, it's a great question. Some of the things that, you know, we, we've had, we're proud that we've been the gold standard for safety since the founding of the company. Uh, we continue to look for new ways to, to provide a safe environment for young people. And, uh, you know, I think this really forced us to really get granular to it to the point where, you know, you think about the pandemic and what was going on. There wasn't a, a set standard of how people handled it across the United States. All 50 states had 50 different ways to do it. And then within those states, there were counties and municipalities that had different ways of handling it. And so we had to put together a, a team that actually elevated those standards, aggregated them into the center, and then we had to deploy them out to the staff that were in those particular areas. So think about 3,500 instructors going out, teaching camps, but then having to have different policies and protocols at every one of those locations. It put a huge... Uh, strain on our on our system but we also were able to create some systems 
that helped us aggregate information that's important to know down in the grassroots level that we can deploy going forward. Yeah, awesome stuff. One of the other new exciting things is an office, a new office. And so yeah. for those who can see you on the screen, you're literally like day two in terms of moving in. So you've got a picture behind you, but <laughs> yeah. talk about the new headquarters, the new, uh, the new home turf. I was like, Jeremy's going to be interviewing me. I need to put stuff that's behind me. So it looks like I've lived here for a second. So I just grabbed that, literally just unpacked that, that picture behind me. We moved in on Tuesday. Uh, you know, we began this journey uh, three and a half, four years ago now. We, we started this journey. We laid out kind of three principles uh, around, uh, guiding principles around where we, you know, where we wanted to put our, our, our location. One of them was we wanted to make sure all of our employees, 100% of our employees would be able to experience our mission firsthand. So you think about our staff and our instructors and our sales reps that are out there talking to the cheerleading teams, the dance teams, the bands, um, they're experiencing it on a regular basis. But our, our finance department, our, our HR department, our IT department, the folks that make up a, a corporate headquarters uh, don't have that opportunity on a regular basis. So we wanted to move into an area where we could help elevate the student experience. So we've got Manassas High School uh, a couple blocks away from us. We're going to be actively plugging into the youth and the community in the area uh, in this space. We wanted to make sure we could come in and provide that kind of value uh, for a community. This, you know, uptown in the Pinch District is a up and coming area. Uh, and to have the opportunity to come in and invest uh, in this community in a significant way and make a difference, not just from a financial uh, standpoint, but from a resource standpoint, an ongoing people resource standpoint, uh, was really important to us and then helping to bring back Memphis uh, to, uh, you know, create this incredible city that, that I love uh, was important as well. So uh, that just kind of guided us here. This is the, the spot that we landed at. It is on the National Registry, it's the oldest snuff factory in the United States of America. And, uh, and we're proud to have um, come in and, and help bring it back to life. Absolutely. I know it's still early on, but what's one of your favorite parts? In terms of you being able to put your personality into it, like you're talking about, what's one of your favorite parts? Yeah, well, you know, we, we tried to leave as much of the history internally as possible. So we have the exposed brick and all of that stuff. Um, we created a much larger training room than we typically would have because we want to host coaches conferences here and provide leadership training. We're going to be doing some things with local kids uh, in partnership with Code Crew. And we're going to, we want to use that where we can train kids how to go in and code. Um, and so we put some elements in there, not just for us as varsity, and not just to kind of create that, that energy that is school spirit, but also to share it with the community uh, that can be used to help, again, elevate the student experience and create a better place for uh, the young people that live in this community. You mentioned Code Crew, which then leads me to gamification, which is a whole new level in terms of where you're headed. Talk about gamification within your industry. Yeah, so um, the club space, uh, which is called All Star uh, in the cheerleading world, All Star Cheer and Dance, um, we have, uh, we've been, you know, that grew outside of the schools because of the popularity of cheerleading um, and dance inside the schools. Uh, it's done in, in uh, training centers, uh, private training centers across the country, and their sole focus is competition. And over the last 25, 30 years, it's been done typically the same way, where a team will go and they'll, they'll compete at a, at a competition in hopes of getting a end of season bid for a championship at the end of the year. And so, uh, you know, teams go to eight to 10 competitions a year, and they go from one to the other, but there's nothing that really connects it and ties it all together as a season. So we created a game that will sit on top of the game. Uh, we're calling it the League by Varsity All-Star. It's going to be a point system where as teams go along the season, they'll build up points depending on how uh, they place at the competitions, depending on how many teams they're competing against, et cetera, et cetera. Now uh, we've built a uh, media uh, for it, that we're, we're going to be doing, um, you know, content development around that and uh, plays of the week, you know, coaches of the week, sequences of the week, those types of things. And then a kind of a game day type on-site 
live uh, shows at our bigger events to, again, drive excitement and engagement throughout the season to get more young people participating in cheerleading and dance across the country. I just think it's so fascinating. This is one of those we could go on and on and on, just the, the business and the momentum you've created and obviously where it's headed. It's just, it's extremely exciting, but it's also too extremely fascinating. And so um, wrap up on your end with website, social media, where do we go to carry this conversation to learn more about all that we're talking about? So where do we go? You got it. Well, varsity.com is the place to go for everything cheerleading, dance, and band. Um, and uh, we also have Varsity TV. So if you, anyone's interested in, in streaming some of these events, uh, we have things in front that are free. And then also we have a a premium subscription where you can actually go in and get some behind the scenes stuff along with live feeds from uh, our different events from around the country. Uh, and then we're on all the social media platforms and uh, I'm getting to that age now, Jeremy, where I can't keep up with them, but uh, we've got Snapchat and we've got Twitter and we've got Facebook and Instagram. Uh, and, and then you've got uh, TikTok and, and I'm sure there's others that I'm missing, but we're on all the, all the main social media platforms. That's where you just say, we're out there everywhere. Just find us. <laughs> well, you and your team are amazing, Bill. Thank you for all you do and for coming on the show. Greatly appreciate it. Thanks, Jeremy. I appreciate everything you do.